Okay, so what I'm doing now, I just re-hooked up the um, distributor. Now, the only, uh, all I've done is obviously plugged it in. Um, I've got a spark plug that's on the output lead from the ignition coil. I'm not going through the coil, it's just this. That's directly to the center lead of, of the cap normally. Got a plug resting there to capture the spark. Um, I've disabled the uh, fuel pump because I don't want the, every time the injectors will fire as in this current setup and I don't want to flood the cylinders with, with fuel so I've actually put a, um, a light bulb, a test light, let me see if I can see that right down there so for instance we'll just go ahead and do this that's the normal five second turn on or however run it, there it goes and that will come on when I I'm going to rotate the uh, the distributor and you'll watch the first of all you know the pump works because uh, this should come on oh it makes an interesting uh, sound up there I think that's coming from one of those back from those uh, vacuum actuator over there it's probably the uh, IO control air thing anyway we seem to get the Let's see if you can see the spark happening. Let's see if it'll show up on this camera. I'm just going to turn this. I can't read really, it. You can see, maybe I'll get a little closer shot. Right. So, everything's working. Again, um, this comes back to that weak signal I, I was having. And. My plan next, let me show this off. My plan next is like I said, it, it'll work fine like this and then it'll just gone. And when it's gone, I'll be sitting of idling off and dead. It won't restart. I get no spark. The pump runs, but there's no spark. So I'm not sure why that's happening. You'll actually, you know, when I turn it on, you'll hear it. Uh, the computer try to restart the pump. Um, I've never tried to see if the pump would continue running uh, after the five second restart. It seems like it, it's reacting to this though. It's as if the pump turning on is correct, but for some reason the spark doesn't seem to be working. So, uh, the plan is going to be, hopefully Jeff can find his distributor. I'd really like to put, put that on a test, Jeff. I'll call you later. Uh, find out what's going on there. See if it has the same, um, you know, low output like I can show on the scope on the last video but in, in the meantime I, I want to have some other way of testing it I got to thinking well if I'm just testing for a voltage output based on the chopper wheel uncovering and covering the optical um, diodes it seems to me that a simple solution would be to just take the dust cover off remove the chopper wheel and just have the uh, the light, it should just be a constant on. Um, and I could test that by simply turning the power on and off to the, uh, to the little LED that, that, that illuminates through the, uh, the, uh, the chopper wheel. So I'll put, I'll put the scope back on the signal wires. I'll turn the battery on and off to the distributor on the test bench. And we'll see what kind of voltage is outputted from both those green and white wires. Get, in other words, get the chopper wheel out of the equation. Remember how I was trying to uh, get it precisely lined up? Well, uh, I'm thinking maybe there's a, I mean, could it be a, a piece of crap uh, covering one of the diodes? I, I don't know if there's two diodes in there shooting, two LEDs shooting through those, through that little module on the, um, on the crank angle sensor. I assume it is. Uh, and remember at one point that, that at one point, this this thing was not secured well. The um, these three screws right here in, in camera, the three screws here that hold this together. Let me pull this out. Hold on. Do you have everything turned off? Yes. At one point, these three screws were simply missing, so the board inside there was not securely attached, and that wheel was. I don't know if it was crashing into it or not, so I'm curious if there was any kind of damage done to that little, that there's a little module in there that shoots the light through. Let me, let me zoom back. You know, it shoots the light through the chopper wheel, so I'll take this dust cover off, 
Um, well, I'll, well, what I'll first do, yeah, I'll take this cover off, I'll remove the chopper wheel, I'll power up the two leads, and then I'm just going to have just, in other words, there's no interruption of the light at all, and I'll just see what the signal voltage is off of both these. Now, like I said, that's the whole point there is to eliminate me having to sit there and screw around with turning this thing to, to get a, an output from the signal. I mean, theoretically, the signal would be constant, constant on, and it would be, I presume, similar in output yet to be determined. Uh, and the other problem as described before, the aftermarket uh, crank on the sensor I'm getting, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but see how this mounts through, it mounts through the distributor. This, this, this distributor housing is not threaded, at least I couldn't see any threads. And those screws go through a hole and into a mounting boss that's embedded in the crank angle sensor. If I'm not mistaken, the crank angle sensor that's coming to me mounts with bolts going through, coming through the top and threads into this distributor housing. And there's no threads in the crank angle sensor, it's through holes on it. So you have an incompatibility of mounting methods. I'm pretty sure that the location is the same, it's just the mounting method's different. So, but we'll deal with that when we get the crank angle sensor. And I, again, I'll test that the same way. I mean, you don't have to have it installed. I mean, you could just take that crank angle sensor without even having it in the distributor, power up the two LED lights and then read the output and see from the uh, uninstalled crank angle sensor. That's be another good test just to see what its output's like. Anyway, this the saga continues. Uh, I, when I find out more, I'll let you know. That's all for now. Thanks.